So this is a word question, and it's a um, potentially a difficult question if you haven't seen like question of this type before. So let me try to go through this in a kind of step-by-step -step way for those people who might not have seen questions of this form. Um, now it's talking about power output needed. So you need a definition of power, which we don't emphasize a lot. Power is defined as some kind of change of energy, or you could just say work, depending on context, per uh, amount of time. So that's what power is. Uh, so you might have this as like dw over dt, infinitesimal of amount of work done over some infinitesimal time. The exact expression we use, it'll depend on context. So let me leave it here for now and we'll see what else we have. Uh, we have some mass of car that's climbing a slope. Okay, we are given some angle and a constant speed. Oh, all right. Well, encountering wind resistance and friction totaling. Oh, all right. Uh, there's some frictional force. I think I feel like I need to draw a free body diagram to kind of <laughs> make sure I understand this thing. Um, so let's start out with a free body diagram. Um, so we have some slope. I'm going to draw it at an exaggeration because I can't draw two degrees. Uh, we got a car. Um, there's going to be gravity on that car. So there, and there's going to be no more force uh, that's going to stop it from accelerating straight down. So if we simply said um, up this slope at some constant speed, Based on that, I would have needed some upward applied engine force or whatever. The force that's doing this power output. I would have needed that already. And the question is tacking on this part that there's a frictional force holding it back. So I got to increase this by that same amount. So there's a whole um, additional applied force. Um, that accounts for friction as well. So, so yeah, it, it's that. That's the setup. So, uh, I realized they're not looking for work; they are looking for power. But I know power is related to work. So, if I'm working towards an expression for work, I think I, there's a way I can get at the power. So, I'm going to look for what's the work being done by the applied force. So I think that's a good place to start because then um, from the setup that's given, been given, I think I can figure out this um, apply the force. And uh, uh, let me do proper standard strategy. I think this is complicated enough. I can't just to wing it. I mean, I can, but it'll I leave people behind. <laughs> so, um, so I've done the step number one. I've drawn my free body diagram. Step number two, uh, acceleration here is a zero, but uh, I think it also makes sense to define my coordinate axis where, um, you know, it's tilted the normal way. <laughs> Step number two. Step number three, ah, I got to break down forces. So I have gravity that has X and Y component, and this angle theta that's been given, that's this angle here. So this will be mg cosine theta, and this will be mg sine theta. Okay, and uh, and this next step is step number four is where I'm gonna take a little bit of a shortcut. So typically we would need to write down all the Newton's second law of equations, the two equations. But I can see just staring at this setup that I don't really care about the y component. Normal force will be whatever it needs to be to uh, make y component work out. So it's only the x component I care about. I'm already given the friction force. I don't need the normal force in any shape or form. So I can just write down this equation. My acceleration along the x component, which is zero, is given by the net force in the x direction divided by the mass, which will be the applied force minus the frictional force minus this x component of gravity, mg sine theta divided by m. So I just need to make this portion equal to zero. So my applied force will be uh, force, the frictional force plus the x component of gravity. 
And since it's a constant force, it's not varying with the position, to get the work done, all you have to do is take this applied force and multiply by delta x. And this is where we run into a little bit of a trouble because we are not being given a displacement. And this is where you might stare at this expression for a bit, this expression for a bit, uh, maybe play with this, think about turning this into an uh, infinitesimal thing. And maybe if you think about it for a bit, hmm, what if uh, I could uh, divide by dt on both sides? And this looks like dx dt. So this must be velocity. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, I'm being slightly, uh, so mathematical, um, and the result wise, what I'm doing is correct. It'll result in correct answer. But this whole dx divided by dt, uh, it's a slight bit of a notational abuse. So um, just to be careful that you can't always do it and always end up with the correct answer. I think mathematicians are more careful about this than we physicists are. But you might arrive at this, uh, which gives you an expression for power in terms of the applied force that we worked out and the velocity which is given. So we can say the power exerted by the engine, whatever, must be the applied force that force your car has to apply forward times the speed at which it's going. So that's it, that'll give us the answer. Um, yeah. So <laughs> just to plug in the numbers. Um, so I think, let me just define the variables F I defined the M already, I need a G, I need a theta, okay. Um, and I need the V. Um, okay, so my expression for power is the applied force, which will be friction force plus mass times G times the sine of theta um, times the applied force times the speed it's going at. And into the symbolic expression, I'll substitute in the numbers, the frictional force of 6,600 newtons, mass of 985 kilogram, um, gravitational constant 9.8 in basic SI units. And theta, I have to be careful. A sage math only understands radians. So I have to take the two um, degrees uh, and convert that into uh, uh, radians, so pi divided by 180. Um, into decimal approximation. Um, so I have theta. Uh, what else do I need? I need a V of um, 34.5. I think that's everything. Yeah, and the answer is 32,300 watt. Uh, 32,300, no, just in watts. Okay, let's plug that in and see what we get. So yeah, that's it. Um, it it's uh, one of those questions I, you know, and sometimes people use this as the formula, uh, which I guess you could in automotive context, this might come up often enough to kind of memorize it as a formula. But you know, I, my preference is that you learn how to drive it on your own, even if it involves a little bit of notational abuse. That I don't care about. I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> So...